I was still a thief when I met Anil. I was only 15, but I was an experienced and successful thief. Anil, a 25-year-old fellow, was watching a wrestling match. He looked kind and simple. I thought I could win his confidence. You look a bit of a wrestler yourself. So do you. Well, I do wrestle a bit. What's your name? Hari Singh. I lied. I took a new name every month. That kept me ahead of the police and my former employers. Hello again. I want to work for you. But I can't pay you. Can you feed me? Can you cook? I can cook. If you can cook, then maybe I can feed you. He took me to his room, over the job in sweet shop, and told me I could sleep on the balcony. At night, I cooked the meal. <coughs> the meal is terrible. I'll have to give it to a stray dog. You don't know how to cook. You're off. But I just hung around, smiling in my most appealing way. <laughs> Never mind. I'll teach you to cook. And I will teach you to write your name, and also to write whole sentences, and to add numbers. I was grateful. I knew that once I could write like an educated man, there would be no limit to what I could achieve. It was quite pleasant working for Anil. I made the tea in the morning, and then I would go out to buy the day's supplies usually making a profit of about a rupee a day. I think he knew I made money this way. But he didn't mind. And he made money by fits and starts. By fits and starts, irregularly. He would borrow one week, like the next. He kept worrying about his next check, but as soon as it arrived, he would go out and celebrate. It seems he wrote for magazines. A very strange way to make a living. One evening, he came home with a small bundle of notes, saying, he had just sold a book to a publisher. At night, I saw him push the notes under the mattress. I had been working for Anil for almost a month, and, apart from cheating on the shopping, had not done anything in my line of work. I had every opportunity for doing so. Anil had given me a key to the door, and I could come and go, as I liked. He was the most trusting person I had ever met. And that is why it was so difficult to rob him. It's easy to rob a greedy man because he can afford to be robbed, but it's difficult to rob a careless man. Sometimes he doesn't even notice that he's been robbed, and that takes all the pleasure out of the work. I thought, I haven't done any real work for a long time. And if I don't take the money, he'll only waste it on his friends. After all, he doesn't even pay me. Anil was asleep. If I took the money at night, I could catch the 1030 Express to luck now. My hand slid under the mattress, searching for the notes. When I found them, I drew them out silently. On the road, I began to run. I had the notes at my waist, held there by the string of my pajamas. I slowed down to a walk and counted the notes. Six hundred rupees and fifties. I could live like an oil-rich Arab for a week or two. When I reached the station, I did not buy a ticket, as usual. The Lucknow Express was just moving out. The train had still to pick up speed and I could jump into one of the carriages. But I hesitated, for some reason, I can't explain. And I lost the chance to get away. When the train had gone, I found myself standing alone, on the deserted platform. I have no idea where to spend this night. I have no friends, as friends are more trouble than help. And I don't want to make anyone curious by staying at a hotel nearby. The only person I know is Anil. Slowly, I walked through the bazaar. In my short career, as a thief, I had made a study of men's faces when they had lost their goods. The greedy man showed fear. The rich man showed anger. And the poor man showed acceptance. But I knew that when Anil would discover the theft, his face would only show a touch of sadness. Not for the loss of money, but for the loss of trust. I found myself in the maiden, sitting on a bench. The night was chilly. 
Soon, it was raining quite heavily. My shirt and pajamas stuck to my skin, and a cold wind blew the rain across my face. I went back to the bazaar, and sat down in the shelter of the clock tower. The clock showed midnight. I felt for the notes. They were damp from the rain. Eniel's money. In the morning, he would probably give me two or three rupees, to go to the cinema, but now, I have it all. But, I can't cook his meals, run to the bazaar, or learn to write whole sentences anymore. I forgot about them, in the excitement of theft. Whole sentences, could one day bring me more than a few hundred repeats. It is a simple matter to steal, and sometimes, just as simple to be caught. But to be a really big man, a clever and respected man, is something else. I should go back to Enhill. If only to learn to read and write, hurried back to the room feeling very nervous, for it is much easier to steal something, than to return it and detect it. I entered the room quietly, and slipped the notes under the mattress. I awoke late next morning, to find that Enil had already made the tea. He stretched out his hand towards me. There was a 50 rupee note between his fingers. My heart sang. I thought I had been discovered. I made some money yesterday. You will be paid regularly. My spirits rose. But when I took the note, I saw it was still wet from the night rain. Today, we'll start writing sentences. He knew. But neither his lips, nor his eyes, showed anything. I smiled at Anil, in my most appealing way. And the smile came by itself, without any effort.